This presentation will be on fundamentals of harmonics, which falls under the power quality analysis modules. Um, let's briefly go over the definition of what uh, harmonics are. Um, the presence of harmonics in electrical systems means that current and voltage are distorted and deviate from sinusoidal waveforms. Uh, they're typically present, um, they're represented by a wave having a frequency that is an integral multiple of the fundamental uh, frequency. Uh, harmonic currents are caused by nonlinear loads, mainly, connected to your power system. Let's talk about why harmonics are harmful. Uh, the harmonics overlay themselves on the fundamental waveform, distorting it and changing its magnitude. Um, as you can see from the uh, uh, illustration, uh, on the left-hand side you have your fundamental frequency and the, the voltage uh, sinusoidal wave, and you also have the uh, third harmonic. When you combine the, the two on the right-hand side, you could see the, uh, the superimposed or overlaid output. Uh, let's continue on why their harmonic distortions are harmful. First of all, we're gonna let's go over um, high current distortion and what kind of problems they cause, and then we'll get into the high voltage distortion. So for high current, um, mainly it'll increase the eddy uh, current losses in transformer and generators. It'll also increase current through resist resistance uh, losses in conductors, transformers, and generator windings. Uh, we could also overload. Uh, uh, neutrals. Now let's take a look why high background voltage distortion or the total harmonic distortion voltage causes problems. First of all, it could cause failures of switch mode power supplies on PLCs, computer and instruments. So if you uh, uh, if you have any of these these problems, the, you know the, a lot of times it could be attributed uh, voltage harmonic distortion uh, problems. Uh, if you have PLCs that are currently, or power supplies that are currently burning up, um, it may be a good idea to uh, perform a harmonics uh, study uh, for your system. Also, uh, generator AVR, your auto voltage regulator, it could mal mal uh, malfunction if there's uh, you know serious uh, voltage distortions in the system. It, it can cause also false reading on critical sensors and instrumentation. Increase operating temperature on induction motor winding and rotor bars leading to premature um, motor failures. Now let's uh, briefly go over what causes harmonics and as I mentioned earlier it's because of non-linear loads and just uh, a, as a brief description a non-linear load is one that draws current in a non-sinusoidal fashion even when the voltage is a perfect sine wave. So for example over on the right hand side we have a, an illustration uh, where we have the voltage uh, sinusoidal wave and then on the bottom because of the chopping that happens in power electronics you have uh, the the current, the distorted uh, current. Nonlinear loads typically would include our static power converters, uh, pulse width modulated drives or PWMs, uh, switch mode power supplies you know, very similar to what we would have in our um, DC uh, power electronics, for example. Inverters, uh, very common now with uh, um, solar PV and, and some of the renewable um, uh, inverters that are being installed for, uh, for solar uh, farms. Arc furnaces for heavy industry. Of course, uh, variable speed drives, which are found, you know, um, in offshore platforms as well as you know in uh, in uh, most industrial sites and even fluorescent lights these are some of the causes uh, that uh, uh, that are that would be considered nonlinear loads what I'd like to do briefly is just kind of give a, a brief introduction to the IEEE 519 standard um, then we'll get into some of the uh, differences between uh, the 1992 uh, 519 standard and the 519-2014 uh, revision. So the IEEE 519 can be used as a starting point 
is in essence a guideline to be used by engineers for power system design consideration and acceptable harmonic content limits for individual equipment should be um, obtained from manufacturer. So uh, really the uh, 519 concerns with the the harmonic distortion that you um, introduce into the uh, the grid at the point of common coupling or PCC. Um, so if you are concerned with um, you know harmonic contents uh, within inside your uh, uh, your site you can you can certainly use the uh, 519 limits however it's a little bit out of the scope of work but we'll go over an example on how to apply it um, using uh, software and uh, but if 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 of main concern is the uh, individual equipment uh, harmonic limits it's a good idea to always start with the manufacturer okay so let's uh, quickly jump into uh, what are some of the differences between the IEEE 519-1992 versus the 2014? Just so everyone is aware, for the IEEE 519-1992 is what currently is implemented in a, um, software like ETAP. In the, the next update of, of ETAP, the IEEE 519-2014 will be released. Let's start with the limits for total demand distortion. This was the old table 10-3 uh, in the 1992 standard. And on the IEEE 519, the new 2014, it's uh, equivalent to table number two. Uh, it remains the same. So nothing has changed here. Uh, as you could see, what this table is really telling us, right, is the, uh, the total demand distortion column that's over on the right-hand side. Uh, and basically what that represents is uh, whenever we have a SCR or short circuit ratio, which is the maximum short circuit current at the point of common coupling uh, over the maximum load demand current of fundamental frequency, again, at the point of common coupling or PCC, right? We get the short circuit uh, ratio, which is what you see on the, on the first column on each one of these tables. Um, typically, uh, an SCR or a short circuit rating, you know, under 20, let's say 10, typically expresses a very large load. An SCR that is uh, greater than 1,000, for example, uh, typically represents very small loads. And in essence, what this means is that for a weak power source, so, you know, a utility that, uh, that is very weak with large demand current, uh, relative to the rated uh, current will show greater waveform dis uh, distortion. On the other hand, a very stiff power source or large contribution, large short circuit contribution, operating at a low demand current will show a decreased waveform uh, distortion. So um, what that typically means is the, that the, the higher the available fault at the point of interconnection or PCC, right, the, uh, the, the, the decreased waveform, uh, you'll see a decreased waveform, basically. Continuing with some of the significant uh, changes between the 1992 and the 2014 uh, standard is the following. Um, uh, over on the right-hand side, we have table 10-2. Uh, That's from the old IEEE 519 1992. You notice uh, we had a voltage range uh, uh, from 120 volts to 69 kV, which called for a total harmonic distortion voltage of 3% uh, for special applications and 5% for general systems, with a 10% allowed for dedicated systems. Uh, over on the left-hand side, for table number one, um, that is from the IEEE 519 2014, we now have special bus voltage range, uh, range that has been added. So now we have a new limit for um, buses under 1 kV. The, um, uh, the individual is 5% and the total harmonic distortion is 8%. So that's a uh, significant change. Uh, and for bus voltages above 1 kV uh, and up to 69 kV, the total harmonic distortion voltage is still um, remains the same. Individual is at 3% and 
and the total harmonic distortion uh, total is five percent. So that didn't uh, that didn't really uh, really really change. So the the uh, the main impact you would have uh, is if your facility, right, um, or the uh, mainly commercial uh, buildings, for example, that um, have an incoming at the point of common coupling that is um, under one kV, right? You now have an increase allowable uh, term, uh, uh, total harmonic distortion voltage, which increased from three percent to five percent. Okay, moving now over to the oh, and here's just a, another representation here of the uh, uh, voltage distortion limit. Uh, these now have been built into the the new version of ETAP. So you'll be able to have a uh, harmonics rulebook that contains these new voltages that you would be able to apply not just at the point of common coupling, but if you uh, if you like, you could uh, you could, you would have different global settings or specifically at um, uh, you know individual locations. The IEC 61000-3-6 has also been um, updated um, just. So everyone is aware the the new update has also been uh, added into the ETAB uh, the new ETAB uh, harmonics rulebook and we'll go over over that here in a in a brief uh, example. Um, before we go over harmonic sources and software modeling, I like to go over the um, uh, I like to go over the where where the new rulebook is found. So let me bring up uh, uh, my copy of, of ETAP here. I'm running harmonic uh, analysis mode. Again, the, the new version of ETAP complies with the, the new uh, IEEE 519 2014. The, the new uh, rulebook allows the user to customize. So under the rules pull down menu, I go over to harmonics. As you could see, uh, for those of you who perform consulting services, you can now have multiple um, limits based on the uh, harmonic standard that you are will be applying. As an example, uh, I what I have here is uh, three rule books, the IEEE 519 2014, uh, which is what we use in North America. I also have the British standard, which is the G5 uh, 4-1. And I also have uh, the IEC 61000-3-6 uh, uh, which is typically used in um, uh, overseas in Europe. Uh, if you, if we, if we briefly go over into the uh, how the the rulebook is put together, right? We could see here the new uh, uh, current uh, harmonic limits, right? Uh, and uh, voltage harmonic limits. You can now then apply. Let me close this. You could actually, if if, if I look at the point of common coupling. Uh, my my uh, incoming bus here, and if I go over to the harmonics tab, you notice that you now have uh, uh, new options. You could you could perform a global compliance based on the the rules uh, in in the uh, in the rulebook, as you know described by us in the in the standard. You can also uh, perform a local compliance rule where you can actually select a rule book for for uh, for this particular location, and you can even look at the you could even launch the uh, the limits from here or launch the uh, the rule book from here, or if uh, for those of you who are opening uh, existing harmonic analysis projects from previous versions of ETAP, it'll typically be set, be set to the old IEEE 519 1992 option where you used to specify the total harmonic distortion limits, uh, both voltage and current, directly in the bus. Okay. Um, also taking into account now is your short circuit current, as we mentioned earlier, right? Uh, your so short circuit ratio will have an impact uh, on the waveform distortion. So now you can either select calculate it and have allow the short circuit study engine perform that for you, or you could specify user define if uh, you happen to have a um, you know a recent enough study uh, and you want to use that value. The other item that has been enhanced uh, for the, for 2014 
is the transmission line cable model as well as the skin effect model for uh, transformer, synchronous motors, uh, induction machines. Um, for transmission line model, you now have the ability to use the short uh, line model as well as the long line model uh, and you get to specify when the long um, line model uh, or cable begins. L let's, let's go back into the, um, the presentation here because what I like to do is I like to uh, briefly go over uh, just a, a, an exercise on how to model a harmonic source whether it's provided to you by the manufacturer or perhaps you may have captured uh, the harmonic source, um, you know, using a um, using a meter, you go out in the field, you measure it, or perhaps you're trying to model the uh, a variable speed drive from a given manufacturer, and they've provided you with the harmonic source. What we're looking here is a typical current spectrum for a six pulse uh, drive. You'll notice on the right hand side we have our uh, magnitude. So this particular drive has uh, predominant harmonics on the fifth and the seventh. Uh, the very first bar that you see on the left hand side, uh, that is your fundamental uh, current and that would typically be the full load amps uh, rating on the, uh, on the drive or on the device. What I'd like to do now is um, jump into the uh, software and show you how uh, you can model a, uh, a typical uh, or a manufacturer provided uh, harmonic source. What we have here is just a small industrial system and um, right in this location down here you have a composite network that contains uh, some um, DC um, sources and loads and what we have here is actually uh, an inverter that's where we're going to attach um, the harmonic uh, library. Uh, this could be a VFD drive attached to you know any of these motors for example. The procedure is in essence the same. Uh, we're gonna go over to the library pull down menu and then select harmonic and then what, we're, what, I'll, what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll just create a new manufacturer. Um, actually what I'm going to do is click on add. The manufacturer will be uh, inverter for example okay and the model will be uh, um, solar PV inverter for example. Under the reference you could put the data sheet um, this is going to be a current source uh, you can put data sheet information there if you like and then uh, once it's created you're going to go edit first let's start from the top uh, and then work our, our way down to the bottom. The fundamental frequency is uh, going to be 60 Hertz uh, this is going to be a six uh, uh, pulse, and if we select populate harmonic spectrum, um, we see that you know it has the uh, the orders that are part of a, a, a typical six pulse. So you have your fifth, seventh, eleventh, thirteenth, and um, for the fifth, and I, I don't want to go back and forth, you know, to the PowerPoint, uh, but I'll just um, I'll just fill it out uh, here in front of you. For the fifth, uh, it is actually a percentage uh, of the, um, the fundamental current. So we're going to put here 20% um, magnitude. For the seventh order is going to be 14.3% uh, magnitude. Uh, for the eleventh uh, order, uh, it's going to be 9.1. And again, I'm getting this just from the uh, um, that data sheet that I that I showed you in the last uh, slide, 7.7. .7, okay, um, the fundamental current, as I mentioned, was 600 amps, uh, and then ETAP automatically fills out the magnitude in amps, right here. Um, you can also fill out the magnitude in amps, and uh, ETAP would provide you with the magnitude in percent. Over on the right hand side you can see a representation of the voltage waveform uh, on top and the uh, current source on the bottom. Uh, we're going to click OK to save this uh, harmonic source. Click on close. So that, that's now part of your uh, library. You can continue using that for any project in the future that's going to stay in your, uh, in your master library. I open up the, uh, the, the source, in this case the inverter. I go over to the harmonics tab and then I'm going to select it uh, from here. I put, I think the manufacturer I put was uh, inverter. There it is, solar PV inverter. Click OK. 
and then the same waveform um, and spectrum uh, actually uh, appears. Um, I will select OK. So the next thing I like to do, and this is how you will set up most of your uh, projects. It's uh, really simple, really. Uh, the 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 rule book already contains right the uh, the limits for the point of common coupling. For example, in this case, is going to be uh, total harmonic distortion of five percent and total current distortion of three percent. So that's automatically going to be a, a global setting. The, the next thing is I'm going to switch over to the harmonic analysis mode from the toolbar here and um, this is to let ETAB know okay I you know switch from load flow or short circuit or protection and coordination to harmonic analysis and I will open this uh, study case and this study case is very important because this will allow you to select which buses you want to display on the on the results for the plots and as well as what you want reported on the one line diagram so it's just basically for the plots and the, the, the single line diagram uh, reports. This is where you can control uh, what kind of information you want to display on the single line diagram or on the plots because what happens is if you have everything selected by default, it may get crowded on the, uh, on the single line diagram. So this way, I want to focus on these three locations. The, my main bus, which is the point of common coupling or PCC. Uh, I want to focus on uh, bus number one and bus number two, which is uh, over on the on the DC composite network right here on the line side of the inverter. So that's where I want to focus. Um, I'd also like to see, for example, um, cable uh, 14, um, you know, the branch. If you want to see like total uh, branch uh, or total um, uh, current distortion through branches, I would, uh, I, I would select, for example, your branches, which could be cables or transmission line or transformers and select um, uh, those elements. So after you have selected those elements, select OK here and then uh, I will go ahead and run a harmonic analysis study. And the first thing that you see on the screen is uh, very important, uh, of course, is the total harmonic distortion, right? at uh, each of the buses that I have selected. So main bus, sub three, bus one, and bus two over on the, uh, on the left hand side. Um, um, the alerts, it's down here. The alerts will in essence give you an idea if for example your, uh, your point of common coupling, your PCC has exceeded the, the limits, right? In this case, uh, my my um, my main bus is okay, so if we were to interconnect with the utility and they ask for a study for a harmonic analysis, um, you know, we could provide them this. We could say, yes, you know, we're well below the, the limit. Uh, we're actually under 1%. Um, but if you take a look at the uh, alert view, we actually do have some issues at uh, one of the locations, which is bus number one. We have a limit of uh, uh, 1.5, but we're operating well above that. In fact, if you take a look at the harmonic order slider right here, my total harmonic distortion at bus number one is uh, greater than uh, 7.29 um, uh, percent. Um, so, you know, that's something that we need to we need to uh, correct. So, uh, what I have here is just a, a text, um, and I'm going to say correct seven. 0.29% total harmonic distortion. Just, just, just a note, so I don't, I, I don't miss it. Now, um, the harmonic order slider. Going back to the slider, uh, this is a very useful tool in the sense that as you start to scroll to the right, you've got the fundamental uh, frequency here. So you basically have your, uh, um, uh, your load flow, your steady state load flow results. And then as you begin to scroll down uh, over to the right, you now have your 5th, you have your 7th, 11th, 13th, and uh, so on. Um, depending on the study case, you could you could specify you know how far you want to go. Now, because this happens to be a 6 pulse, as you could tell, we have actually predominant uh, harmonic content on the, on the 5th right here. My amps on the on the um, on the fifth order is actually 179.5 amps, 124 amps on the seventh, 
and 71.6 amps on the 11th. So um, they just begin to decrease after that. So what I what I like to do is actually want to make a note because when I begin to doing uh, tuning my filter, I want to know um, you know what's the, what what's the harmonic order that contains the uh, the highest content. So in this case, I go ho I go ahead and open my um, my notepad here. Maybe let me decrease the size of the font here a little bit. And I'm going to put here a uh, fifth order at 179.5 amps. Click OK. There it is. The, 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 those are just uh, you know my notes. I continue to have my notes. Uh, the other uh, useful uh, feature available um, in the software would be the ability to open a plot and see, for example, the, the waveform for uh, bus 1 in this case. So if you wanted to display the waveform, uh, time versus uh, voltage here, right, in cycles, you can you can see the uh, the combined fundamental with you know the uh, the fifth, the seven, eleven, thirteen. So this is this is kind of how it would look on the measuring equipment if you if you would. Okay, now that I've recorded some of the uh, the harmonic results there on the one line diagram, you can you can certainly also uh, check the, you know uh, print the report and have all the information uh, at your fingertips. So if I open the report again from the right hand side, I go over to results. Um, and I want to uh, output the report in PDF format, right? You could see here the complete report, not just for uh, the location bus one, but for every single location, uh, you basically have your fundamental column right here, and you have your total harmonic distortion, right? And the various uh, indices. Uh, very important is the, um, uh, the ability to quickly see when a location has alerts. And that's what the hashtag and the star basically mean here for bus number one. It just basically means that we have exceeded. And as part of the report, you also have uh, an alerts portion. It's a very comprehensive report. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the time to go over it. But it's this is, in essence, the report you would see at the end as an appendix to a harmonics uh, study. Okay. Now, mo moving forward with the, uh, with the example, what I like to do now is... Uh, quickly display uh, the following information. So I would like to display on the right hand side I have my harmonic analysis view and I'm displaying my I've, I've switched the uh, harmonic order slider so it's showing the the total harmonic distortion here and then I'll close the the DC system because what I like to do is I want to open my load flow view. Here's my load flow view and um, at the moment I have data blocks uh, enable I could turn them off here. And as you know, as part of the three-dimensional database in ETAP, you could have uh, multiple one-line diagrams representing the same single-line diagram, right? You could just have multiple ways of representing the data. So that's it's exactly what I did. It's just uh, I have a copy of the same one-line diagram on the left-hand side. What I like to do is just display, for example, uh, power flow information. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, you know, the standard ETAP results, but you also have the ability um, of displaying the results as data blocks. Data blocks allows you to uh, customize the information. For example, I'm using um, and this data block uh, besides, you know, the ID, the, the nominal voltage, and the, the, the voltage um, drop as a percentage of the nominal uh, voltage here. I'm also displaying my loading uh, real, uh, real power reactive as well as uh, um, my power flow in amps right uh, going through this particular point or bus uh, also I have you know power factor displayed on the on the left hand side as my load flow results and what I you know what I like to emphasize here is that on the left hand side this is typically the the load flow analysis that you would use to be sizing your protective device frame your cables your transformer and uh, you're not taking into account harmonics obviously but uh, once you perform, uh, you know, attach a harmonic so source to the system and you display the actual uh, uh, harmonics content and you express it as the total uh, harmonic distortion, you could see that on the line side of this 1.5 MVA transformer, uh, after you uh, attach harmonic sources for the inverter or the VFD drive, whatever that may be, you actually have a higher amps, total amps at 110 
versus 106.9 amps, right? So if this protective device um, here was uh, set to pick up at 108 amps, right? Uh, it wouldn't trip under normal conditions or, you know, without any harmonics. But over on the right-hand side, once you uh, attach the harmonic source and, um, you know, the system is operating using the, uh, you know, that harmonic source current, uh, uh, harmonic source, it, you now see uh, a current being drawn of 110 amps. So if that circuit breaker, again, was set to 108 uh, as the pickup or the trip, you would pretty much have an, a nuisance uh, trip, right? So that's, you know, that's, uh, you know, just a quick way to see why it's so important to take harmonics uh, into account and how it could, you know, cause problems with not just your cables, but also your protective devices and uh, transformers, as well as shortening the life of some of your equipment. Okay, so moving on to this exercise, uh, what I like to do here now is uh, I would like to size a, uh, a filter now. Um, that's uh, in essence what I like to do. So over um, on the left hand side, uh, actually I guess on the right hand side, I, I could do it either either way. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to uh, edit mode, okay? And on er edit mode, what I like to do is I would like to put a um, uh, harmonic filter here. There's a harmonic, there's a filter right there. I will attach it to my one line diagram. You notice that when I attach it on the right hand side, it automatically appears also on the left. And the reason why is because we're using the same database. All we're doing is having uh, the ability to to display the data, uh, different data on the same single line diagram. Okay, and then uh, the other item I like to, to introduce here is just a circuit breaker. And the reason why is because under normal condition, you notice up here my configuration, under normal condition, this actually should be set to open because I haven't actually commissioned uh, this particular filter. It's not found in the field. Um, uh, at this point, all we're doing is a study. And when I switch from uh, normal to uh, on, as you could see, then the filter becomes on. Same, same thing on this side. It's on. Now it's on the normal. Normal. Okay. Now, to begin uh, sizing of this filter, uh, what I'm go going to do here is, so, so there's my there's my power flow over on the left. I need to open my filter here, go over to the parameters. This is going to be a, uh, a single tune. Um, my rated KV here is not 480. This is actually, this should be the single phase um, cap rating. So it's a 480 or 0.48 KV divided by square root of three. So that's going to be 0.277 KV, okay? I'm going to use a Q factor of, um, I'll just leave the, uh, the default. Uh, max KV, this would be the, uh, the, the three-phase rating, so it's 480, right? And then to begin the um, uh, sizing the filter, we're going to click on size filter here. And um, we mentioned that I, I'm trying to correct basically uh, the, the fifth, right, or the, the highest content, which are in my notes over on the right-hand side. So I'm going to say harmonic order fifth, harmonic current, it's 179.5 amps. Over on the right-hand hand side, you have sizing options. You got power factor correction, minimize initial cost. Uh, or size per minimized operating cost. This is mainly uh, more so for uh, utility or distribution uh, type of uh, users. Uh, for industrial, we typically go with power factor correction. So we're gonna jump right into the power factor correction option here. We're gonna select existing power factor, right? And my existing power factor is actually um, before the, um, the filter is put in place. It's on the left-hand side. You can see here is 86. 86.74, okay, and of course the, the desired power factor is going to be unity or uh, 100%, and then my load MVA, again going over um, uh, the results, uh, my, my loading MVA was uh, 754 um, MVA, this is basically uh, how much is being drawn here, uh, because this is going to be single phase load MVA, uh, I just need to divide it by three, so this is going to be 0.754. We're going to click on size filter, okay, and then uh, the results here are grayed out because they're ready to be, uh, you click on substitute, and they're ready to be placed here on the um, uh, 
uh, on the harmonic filter editor. The, 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 I guess the last thing I need to uh, specify is going to be my inductor, inductor maximum uh, current and I can specify that here. I, uh, this is 1200 amp um, maximum current. Um, I'm going to select click OK here. All right. And now just to show the before and after, uh, I could do it over on the on the right hand side. Yeah, I could I could do it on the right hand side. Yep. So uh, I got my load flow uh, on the left and my harmonic analysis on the right hand side. Um, in order to run this, I would like to bring my filter online. There it is. Run uh, harmonics analysis. Okay. And you notice the uh, total harmonic distortion uh, has now dropped from 7.29% um, down to 2.2% total harmonic uh, distortion. Okay. The, the last piece of information I like to go over is uh, running the frequency scan. Um, it's over on the right hand side. I've, I select run frequency scan. I open my plots. I look at my um, uh, waveform for bus uh, number one. Click collect. Okay, that was a waveform. Now, if I want to look at my spectrum, there it is. Okay, and if I want to look at my in freq as 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 uh, as a frequency scan. There it is. So in essence, what we have is the uh, harmonic order um, on the x-axis here versus the impedance. Uh, this makes it very easy to see the, the various resonance and uh, also allowing you to, to better uh, tune a filter. Um, with this, uh, I'd like to uh, say uh, thank you for, for watching this, uh, this presentation.